everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to make this gigantic Pomsey lookalike who's already found a little Pomsey friend named Patches. Let's get started! Now to make this plush, I'll be using this faux fur fabric that I found at Joanne Fabrics. I love it, it's soft and it's pink and it's perfect. Now here I made a template that's 21 inches long by 7 inches wide and I have 6 times at the top because that's how many panels you're going to need, 6. If you have your fabric folded over the way I do, you're only going to have to cut around this 3 times. Now here I'm using pins to keep it in place while I cut around it. And then I'll also use two clothespins at the top just to keep the fabric flat at the top while I cut around it. Note to self, get some sharper scissors. As you can see in this clip, I'm struggling to cut around the edge of my panel, but that's also because I'm cutting out two panels at once and the fur is pretty thick. So sharp scissors would have done a much better job. So sorry that this clip is so long. Once you finish cutting around the first side, cut around the second side and when you're finished, you should have two plush panels. As I have my first two plush panels cut out, I can go ahead and use one of those as a template to cut out the other four, or I can go ahead and use my paper template. Now that I've cut out all six of my panels, I'll take the top two and I'll place them face to face. That means the plush sides down. Then I'll go ahead and pin almost all the way down, leaving about an inch and a half at the end so that I can leave that open and stuff it later on. So the pinning is optional, but I like to pin because it helps it stay in place, especially when I sew. Now that I've finished pinning along the side, and I left a little space at the end so that I can stuff it later on, as I said before. Now I by no means claim to be an expert seamstress, I just wanted to show you the stitch that I'll be using to sew along the side of my panels. Now if you have a sewing machine, of course, it'll be a lot faster, but really, this did not take me that long. Now here I'm using the stitch on the actual panel, but as you can see it's really hard to see the stitch and that's why I wanted to show you in the previous clip what the stitch will actually look like. Now as I said before, I'm not going to sew this all the way to the end, I'm going to leave about an inch or an inch and a half of space. Now to add your third panel, open up your first two panels a little bit and then turn your third panel plush side down and pin along the edge again leaving a space and then go ahead and sew this panel. Now it's time to add the fourth panel. Again, open up a little bit what you've done so far, take your fourth panel and place it plush side down and then pin along the edge and sew. Now it's time to add panel number five, we're almost there. Again, open it up, turn it plush side down and then pin along the edge and sew. Can you believe it? We're now at panel six, the last panel. So again, do the same thing you did before. The panel goes plush side down, pin it along the edge, leave a little space, and then sew. So now that all the panels have been sewn together, it's time to close our seam. So what we're gonna do is pin, and again, sew along that edge, pin and sew. When you're finished pinning along the last side, what you're going to do is pin across the top two because we're going to sew that closed so that only the bottom is left open. Now I finished sewing up my body, but before I move on to the tail, what I'll do is add a little neodymium magnet to the top. And I'm just using some E6000 for this. Neodymium magnets are very strong, so what I would do, if you were making this for a very young child, I would skip the magnet. Add a little dab of E6000, gently press your magnet into it and let it cure for at least 24 hours. Now it's time to work on my tail. For the tail, I'm using a piece of fabric that's 36 inches long by 10 inches wide and folding it with the plush on the inside. Next, I use the measuring tape and a Sharpie to measure four inches across and mark dots and that will just make it much easier when I sew. At the top of it, I'm gonna use an empty container to make a rounded tip and then I'm going to join all the dots together. Connect the dots. Just when you thought there'd be no more pinning. Yes, I'm using a few more pins 
just to help my fabric stay in place once I actually sew around the perimeter of my tail. For this part, I decided to pull out the old sewing machine. All I'm doing is sewing along the long pink line, and then once I get to the top, as you'll see in the next clip, I make sure that I follow it all around the curves so that you'll have that nice curved shape once you turn this inside out. Before you turn it inside out, be sure to cut off the excess so it won't be too hard to turn inside out and it won't be too bunchy. And please don't forget to also cut off the excess around the curve. After all your hard work, it's time to turn this tail inside out. So to do that, you just fold it over and keep pushing it upwards. Since the tail is long, I had to speed this clip up a little. Now it's time to stuff the tail, and to do that, I'll be using this polyfill that I found at Walmart. You can also find it at any other hobby store. So what I'm going to do is just take some polyfill and push it all the way to the end of my tail. I'm not going to fill it completely, I'm only going to fill it about probably one-fifth of the way, and then I'm going to be adding a wire to it. If you want your tail to be a little softer and more flexible, then you can skip the wire and just stuff it a little bit less than you see me do in this video. Now here I have two pieces of wire about 30 inches long because I want to leave some space at the end so I can sew it in the bottom. And what I did with my two strands of wire was I twisted them around each other just so that they would be firmer. If you're using a thicker wire like I ended up doing in the end, you probably won't have to do this. But this was bendy wire, this was 16 gauge and that's why I ended up doing this. No matter what wire you use, put some kind of tape or something on the end so that way it won't poke through the end of your tail. So right now I'm just pushing the wire up into the top of the polyfill and then once I'm finished doing that, I'm going to continue stuffing it. You kind of have to work your way around the wire, which is another reason that you need some kind of tape because you don't want to end up poking yourself with the wire. Please have a grown-up help you with this if you're a child, let the grown-up do this for you. Now it took some effort to get the polyfill in there and that's why I suggest going with like a little thicker wire if possible because as you push the polyfill in your wire kind of starts to bend. But if you go with a thinner wire, that's okay too. It just will take a little bit more effort. I know I repeat myself a lot but please don't forget not to stuff it all the way and leave at least 6 to 8 inches at the end without any polyfill. Now I've finished stuffing my tail and what you can do is you can shape it a little bit with your hands, roll a little bit until it has a nice shape. And then before I stuff my ball and add the tail to it, what I'm going to be doing is adding another neodymium magnet to the front of my plush. That way I won't forget where my magnet is. Of course, if you're not adding a magnet, you don't have to worry about this part. Now it's time to turn my ball inside out. Now the upcoming clip I added after the fact because I wasn't sure what I was going to use for the nose. But then I found the perfect nose and realized that this had to be unstuffed. So this is called a safety nose and the first thing I'm going to do is just mark where I want my nose to go with a pink magic marker. Now here I just use a pair of scissors to make a hole where the mark is. And then what I'll do is I'll push the safety nose through that hole. It just makes it a little easier for you to attach the nose. Then it's time for me to attach the safety clip to the back of the nose. Once you do this, make sure that you just hold the nose in place so that it points the direction that you want it to go. Because once you put this clip on, you're not going to be able to take the nose off or move it. The reason you don't see the nose on the Ponzi in the upcoming clips is because I added it afterwards. Now it's time to stuff the body with some polyfill. And I'm using the same polyfill I used before. I actually bought two small bags of it. Thankfully, you'll find out that the body is much easier to stuff than the tail, and it took no time at all. Once I'm finished doing this, I'll show you how to attach your tail to the body. Now it's time to attach the tail to the body. So to do this, take the part of your tail that has no stuffing in it and just under, put it underneath the opening of the body. 
and then just use a simple stitch needle and thread for this and then just go under over under over covering up all the openings with the tail what you do is you kind of use the tail to cover up the stuffing now as you'll see coming up i finished sewing all around the edge and you can see there's no more stuffing showing now i'm going to sew down another part of the tail just to make sure that when the ponzi is on the floor it will sit flat again i'm using the same stitch under, over, under, over. I'm gonna go all the way around, that all along the length of that side of the tail, and then come to the other side of the tail and go along the length of that side of the tail. When you're finished to tie up your thread, put your needle halfway out, wrap the thread around about three times, and then you can cut the thread and it won't come loose. Hooray, the tail is on! Now it's time to make the ears. So here I cut out a shape that I'm going to be using and I found these peel and stick foam sheets of Walmart that I'm going to be using for the ears. I like this color pink. There was no lighter pink in the packet, so this is what I'll be using for the front of the ear. And I'm just going to put my shape on top, trace around the edge, and then I'm going to turn it over the other way as you'll see in a minute, and then trace around the edge again. Now I'm cutting around the front of my ears because I'll use these as templates to make the back of the ears. Now here I'm using the ear that I already cut out as a template to cut out the back of the ear because these two pieces are actually going to stick together. Then I did the same thing with the second ear. I used it as a template to make the back of the ear. Now this glitter foam already has adhesive on it, so all it had to do was peel off the backing of both pieces of the ear and then just stick them together. When you're finished sticking both pieces together, trim off any excess if you have it. Now the ears are ready to be attached. Now here I have the body of the Fonzie, and basically I need to attach the ears and the eyes. So the ears I'm going to make three inches apart. So what I'm gonna do is take a look at these pins here, and what I'm gonna do is mark where I'm gonna put the ears. That way they'll be even. I want them to look right in the middle of the head, so I'm just gonna stick this right in here, like this, I'm not sure if you can see that. And then I'm gonna put this one three inches away, right down here show you in a second because that's how far apart I want the ears now here are my ears and I'm going to put the pink side forwards so what I'm going to do is get my hot glue gun and I'm going to start the ear right here where I marked it I'm just going to put a lot of hot glue right down this line here so that they stick really well Place it right in the hot glue and a little bit more. I only have one time to do this. Okay, and then I'll hold it in there while the glue cools and hardens. Now the last thing I need to do is add her eyes. And if you want to learn how to make these eyes, click on the video that's going to be in the end screen and I'll show you how to make these eyes. Otherwise, if I showed you here, the video would have been just way too long. So I'm just going to add some glue and I'll be adding her eye right over here, kind of next to her nose and then one on this side covering the lines. So it looks like this. Now I ended up sticking the eyes off camera because it was kind of hard to do on camera because I had to have it facing me and I wanted to make sure that I added them the correct way. And so what it, all I did was I added a lot of hot glue behind it and then I pressed it down like this and squeezed it so that it's stuck and the same thing with this eye. And then you can go around the edge in the back and just add more hot glue if you need. But that should hold. Now let's see what Patches thinks of her new friend. to play with her. Now before I forget, if you add a magnet, just remove the magnet now, the top magnet, and I'll explain in an upcoming video what this magnet is for. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to wait until the end screen so you can click on any of the videos if you want to learn how to make the eyes or see any of my other Pomsies videos. Thanks for watching!